scan is one of the hardest functions to learn in Excel, but once you understand how it works, it can completely change the way you build formulas, giving you a level of control that almost feels like programming inside Excel. So let me show you how it works step by step with four realistic examples. Here in the first and easiest example, suppose we want to calculate the cumulative profit. So for January, it would simply be 10,000, but for February, it would be the sum of January plus the February figures. March is the sum of these three, etc. This is known as the running total, and it's one of the most common use cases for the scan function. And if you want the same data set, you can download it for free in the video description to follow along. So all we need to do is type equals scan, hit the tab key. The initial value is maybe we had the previous balance, but right now, because we start at January, we'll say we have a balance of zero. Comma, the array is all of our profit figures, so all the way to the bottom here. And then for the function, we just want the sum. We can close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see month one, it's simply the 10K. Now we go up to 18K and all the way to the bottom. At this point, you might be like, this formula is not that hard to learn, but that's because we've used a simplified version with the sum function. Instead, you would typically use the scan function first. Let's say we do the same thing, zero, this is the array. But now as the function, you would typically use lambda. So this function right here, which basically allows you to create custom functions inside Excel. When using it with scan, it allows for two variables. So let me quickly show you. One would be the total value. So that would be the running total, let's say, comma. And the second variable could be the current value. So that's the current profit of the month. Put a comma there again. And so the total plus the current. So the total is up to that year. Let's suppose we're looking at March in this case. So that's month number three. The total would be the sum of January and February. And then the current would be the March amount. That means we would need to sum all three of them to get the cumulative profit for March. So we can put total plus current. Then we can close that parenthesis, close it again, this time for the scan function, and hit enter. You'll notice we get the exact same data. Right now, I use the total and the current, as I think that describes it well, but you can also change that to whatever you like. So oftentimes, you might see this as like A and B or something like that. So I can put A and B instead. But obviously, to explain it first, it's a bit easier to just use the total and the current or those as those describe things a bit better. So with A and B, we get the same result. Of course, using just the sum instead of complicating your life with lambda makes a lot more sense for this particular scenario. But sometimes, depending on the scenario, the sum function is no longer going to work, which is something we'll look at later in the video. In the first example, we were looking at the cumulative profit, so it made sense to use the sum function. But now let's go over trying to find out the maximum profit. So year-to-date maximums, that means that in January, it should be obviously the first one, but in February and March, we should still have that 9,500 as the maximum. Only in April should it switch to 15,000. To do this, we just need to tweak the scan function a bit. So we're starting again at zero. The array is all of the profit area, comma again. And finally, for the function, instead of doing the sum, we just need to do the max. It's really that simple. Close up parentheses and hit enter. So first three months, it's giving us the 9,500. But as soon as we have a bigger number for the year, it switches to that one all the way to the biggest, which is the 24K. If you're an advanced Excel user, you'll know that you don't even need to do the scan or the lambda function to calculate the cumulative profit or the year to date total or maximum. Instead, we can just use the sum to calculate the cumulative profit. Hit the tab key there, but if we select this figure, which is in a table, we get this formatting, which we don't want. Instead, it's cell C3, so I can just put C3 in here like this and make sure I lock this with the F4 key. That's going to allow it to stay fixed on the top. Put the colon here and then type C3 again. So right now, we're only summing that 10,000. It obviously gives me 10,000. But as I drag this down, you'll notice I get the same results as with the lambda or just using the scan function. That's because if we click inside of it, the top part is staying fixed, but the bottom is fully dynamic, so it keeps growing as I go down. Instead of the sum, if we wanted the maximum, we just need to change the function and it's going to do the exact same thing. In this case, it's at 10,000 and then it goes all the way up to the 15,000. 
So you might wonder why would you use this scan function for this scenario then? And the key difference is that when you're working with tables like this, as soon as I add new data in here, let's say a 5000, you'll notice that it updates when I'm using the scan because it's a dynamic array. Same thing with the scan and lambda. But when it comes to this other method or the dollar signs, it no longer drags lower down. Now let's go over a scenario where we can no longer use a simplified version with the sum or the max for the scan function. Here we've got a list of names that we would like to add together. So maybe it can be something like an event where we have a list of people who are going to be attending. So first for Bill, it would just be Bill. And for this, we can use the scan function. Let's say initial value of zero. The array is all of the names. And the function, let's suppose we want to add these, right? So we're going to try the sum function. You'll notice though that just gives us zeros. And that's because the initial value is zero, but these are text values. So that doesn't make too much sense. What if instead we leave this empty? So to tell Excel it's empty, we just add two quotation signs. Hit enter there and you'll notice we get a separate value error. And that's because we're trying to sum something that's not a number. In this case, we have all of this text. Now you can start to see why we might need Lambda instead. And if you're liking this content and you want to learn more, you can also check out our range of courses, which include Excel, Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more, including bundles and programs. And what makes our courses different is that they're all applied to the real world. So aside from teaching the theory, our lessons also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day to day, ranging from creating a financial model from scratch on Excel to creating a PNL dashboard on Power BI, all the way to making a professional pitch deck presentation in PowerPoint. And don't worry, if you get stuck along the way, you can always ask us questions in the discussions area. So if you're interested in checking this out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. The sum function clearly hasn't worked, so we're gonna need to use Lambda instead over here. So let's change that. Lambda, hit the top key there, and the parameters, in this case, let's say A, comma, B, comma. And then what do we wanna do? We wanna add these, but right now they're text values, so that's not really gonna work. Instead, what we'll do is A ampersand B. So you can see just how much we can customize with the Lambda. Now let's make sure we close the parentheses and hit enter, and we're getting the full list of names. All right, we managed to get it to work, but realistically, if we look at the results, they don't look great because we have no spaces or commas in between these names. Remember, the A part is the running total and the B is the current value. To clean this up, we might think of adding an ampersand. So right in here, we'll add another one. And in quotations, maybe just add a space like that, or we can add a comma and a space. Hit enter there to see how that looks. But now the problem is that we have this comma and the space at the start as well, not just in between. So I think the best method would be to add an if statement somewhere. Right after a first ampersand, I'm going to put an if. And if a is equals to nothing, meaning that it's at the very start, then we'll put a comma and say to put nothing, comma again. And if it's not, so there is an actual value there, then we'll put a comma and a space. I know this is getting quite hard to see. But let me just close this part out. And to explain that again, within the if statement, if a, so if the total is nothing, then we want to show nothing so we don't see these commas. However, if the total is not nothing, then we want to add a comma so that it separates each one. The very end is fine as is, and we can just hit enter. Awesome, now it's looking nice and clean. We don't have that comma and the space at the very start. While that's just one example, hopefully you can start to see how using the scan combined with the lambda gives you access to a lot of other stuff like being able to add an if statement in there and ampersands like this. You might be surprised to hear there's a sister function to the scan which is called reduce. I know that's not very self-explanatory, so let me show you what it does. I'm gonna type equals reduce in here and the initial value, let's suppose we're looking for the cumulative profit again, is simply going to be zero comma the array is all of this area not gonna include the last one for now comma and the function is going to be the sum again close up parenthesis and hit enter let me quickly delete this last one which is just not relevant and you can see all it's done is it's given us the total without all of the previous calculations that's exactly what the reduce does 
In this scenario, it's actually the same thing as just taking the sum of all of these values. To practice how well you've been learning the scan function, here's a final scenario for you to try. So we're looking at the cash balance and the tricky part here is that we have both cash inflows and cash outflows. So to manage that, we're gonna type equals scan in here. The initial value is zero again. We have nothing before the January month, comma, and the array, well, we now have two parts, right? We've got this whole area right here, and we've got this whole other area with the outflows. So how can we tackle that? Well, we can just take the inflows minus the outflows, comma, and for the function, of course, we can use lambda like we have before, but probably a simpler method in this scenario is just to use the sum. Hit enter there, and this, this balance should just be the inflow minus the outflow for month one. That looks all right. And for month two, it's going to be the sum of this previous balance plus whatever is happening right here. So let me quickly test that. This figure right here, the inflows minus the outflows for month two are 627. So if I add these two right here, it should give me 215, which seems to be the case. As you can imagine, the Lambda function has a ton of use cases outside of the scan function, which you can learn about with this video over here, or you can check out our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.